Hey guys, so as you can see, I'm still messing around with my YouTube recording setup. I'm still looking for a third monitor and I'm still looking for storage at the side of the room and at the back so that I can store boxes and microphones and cables and tripods and accessories. I need this room to be functional. And I'm still playing around with different lighting setups and I'm actually testing a new microphone today. I'm testing the Rode VideoMic NTG as a boom mic. So I'm looking to get another microphone, I'm looking to get another camera and I'm building a PC as well. I'm building a new PC. So I am spinning a lot of plates and I'm spending a lot of money, but when most of this is set up, I'm hoping to incorporate the Raspberry Pi 400 into this setup. The idea is simple. I want to plug this into a monitor, either a main monitor or into a portable monitor, which I connect to this. And yes, I can use it to browse the web, but I can do that in Windows already. So I like to use this to kind of improve my coding, test lots of different software, test new Raspberry Pi applications and Raspberry Pi projects as well. So what I'd like to do for you all in this video is share with you a couple of different mods that I've came across over the last week for the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Raspberry Pi 400. And I'd also like to share with you a new product which is co coming out soon, which is very expensive, but you'll find it interesting. So what I'd like to start off with is this, my first Pi project, Raspberry Pi NAS with a Pi 4 and some, some old external hard drive. So the reason I want to show this is not because of the fantastic cable management at the wall, which is pretty poor, um, but I like the idea of this because I think a Raspberry Pi 4 with Pi NAS is a very good first project for someone. Now, disregard the bad cabling, there is a few good ideas here, such as the hard drive uh, chassis here that you just put the hard drive, the 2.5 inch hard drive in and just slot it in, which is I think why one of the hard drives is lower because of something else there. Um, I don't know what he's doing with the cables here, but I do think this is a very good first project for the Raspberry Pi because most of us do have some old hard drives lying around and PyNAS is relatively easy to set up, it's re relatively easy to install and you just hook up a few hard drives and then you can use it for well, many different things. You can use it for a test server for different uh, you know, Linux op uh, operating systems, you can use it to test websites, you can use it to play media, you can use it to store Dropbox files. There's a lot of things you can do with a NAS setup. Now, personally, I am leaning more towards professional NAS setups from Synology and QNAP and Terramaster and different companies like that. But I do like the idea of using something like this for side projects and just little mini projects. For example, a Dropbox server for accessing Dropbox files around the house without having to use the official Dropbox app, which is a CPU killer. So yeah, I think there's always something you can take from different mods like this, even if they've not did everything right. So I think that's an interesting project. The next one I want to show you is a Raspberry Pi 400 with a display. And you can see it here. Now, I think this is a very interesting concept and it's no surprise that someone came up with this. I mean, I think everyone knew that something like this would come up. And if you look at it here, you can see there's like a kind of rubbery shell around the screen that someone has 3D printed. And it's, this is relatively a simple mod to do if you know what to do with a 3D printer. The Raspberry Pi 400 has got the JIPO, the GIPO header at the back. So effectively there's an expansion port at the back of the Raspberry Pi 400 that allows you to connect you know, different accessories. There is uh, an, an HDMI port there, or mini HDMI port, there's two of them. But what they've done here is avoided cables by plugging directly into the GIPO header. And you know, if, if you just plug the display in, it would look a little bit messy, it wouldn't look neat, but what they've done is put the case around it so that it protects it and it looks a little bit nicer. Now, what I'd like to see from this is copycats. I'd like to see the official Raspberry Pi Foundation or some other Raspberry Pi developer or company come out and do something like this, but not custom made, something a little bit more professional, something a little bit more refined, but an official type accessory for the Raspberry Pi 400 because I think the idea of having a screen connected directly to the Raspberry Pi 400 is perfect because you've got the keyboard here already and you've got everything that you need. So, you know, plug in with a, a, a USB Type-C cable and you've got power. You could power it with a power bank if you want and then you've got the screen there as well. You've got your little mini computer. So 
yeah, very interesting concept. I like the idea of that. I don't know if I'll go down and, you know, 3D print anything. I don't have a 3D printer right now, which is the main reason I'm not trying this, but I do like the idea of this and I'd like to see some more official accessories come out for it, for the, for the Raspberry Pi 400. So go back to, um, I'm not sure if this is a Raspberry Pi 0 or a Raspberry Pi 3B or 4. Uh, I don't know what this person is using, but what they've got here is, as you can see, a retro style wireless OBD2 dashboard and music player for his car. And you can see, He's got different things set up. Now, I like the idea of this. You know, you can buy different uh, screens and, and products that will allow you to see the tuning that you've done in your car. But what this person has done is use Raspberry Pi because they can code it any way they want and it's a little bit more flexible. So there's a description here about how he's done it. And what was interesting here is that when the car turns on, my Raspberry Pi software automatically connects to a Bluetooth LE OB D2 dongle, if I can say it correctly. So no cabling is required between the OBD2 port and the Raspberry Pi screen module. I cannot pronounce OBD2 for some reason, R2D2. Um, so I like how he set it up here where it doesn't have to connect with the cable. And yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I do like the idea of this and I do like little projects like this where you, you take a screen and you incorporate some information into that screen, be it, you know, your social media or be it your a weather station or be it, your connected home where you can see what your heating is at home and different things. There's a lot of different things you can do with that. We're just taking a screen and a Pi Zero or a Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 and just setting up a simple uh, display which displays information and just changes over time. And I've seen a lot of different products as well out where it's like e-ink, colourful e-ink. So it kind of acts like a Kindle, so it's really low powered as well. So very interesting project. But this is arguably one of the coolest projects. Now, this it's perhaps easy to do if you actually break it down, but it's maybe out with anything I've tried before, but it's something I would like to do. What it does is add, this adds a mechanical keyboard to the Raspberry Pi 400. And if I scroll down, you can see what's happening here. He's got the, the Raspberry Pi board and he's connected it up to this mechanical keyboard. And then he's putting it back into the Raspberry Pi chassis. And then you can see he's got this. So that is how we set it up. And if you go down, you can see you've got all the mechanical keyboard keys, all the switches, and that is the finished product. I mean, that just looks fantastic. That looks absolutely amazing. And again, this is something I'd love to see a company come out and do some sort of official accessory or variation of the Raspberry Pi 400. As much as I do like the Raspberry Pi 400, I will say the official keyboard I quickly realized that this keyboard isn't great. I mean, this keyboard's fine copying, pasting, browsing the web, you know, typing a quick email, but I would not want to write an article on this. I, would want, I wouldn't want to write a journal or notes or write, you know, thousands of words in an article. It's just kind of, it's, it's just a flat, bouncy experience when you're typing the keys. It's like, I don't know, it's just not nice. There's maybe some ways to fix the official uh, keyboard layout, you know, as far as the chiclet style keys, but, I think something like this would be excellent and would address one of the things that I don't like about the Raspberry Pi 400. So an interesting mod. I'll leave a link to all of these so you can check it out. Maybe you guys are a bit more hands-on, you could do something like this. But it's very interesting to see this. So the last thing I want to share with you, arguably the most interesting, but without doubt it is the most expensive. This is going to retail about $900 for the Founders Edition. I don't know if it's a little bit cheaper when it goes in sale. Uh, when it goes in sale. So you can see here, this is the Ready Model 100 Mark One. So this is a single board computer. I think it works with like the BBC Micro, and I think it works with Micro ITX and Raspberry Pis. And this can be used for lots of different things. And I don't think we've even seen what you know what you can do with this. It's got lots of suggestions here, you know, as far as you know, audio setups, MIDI controllers, and uh, networking and different things. If you go down here, you can see the Model 100 is a premium aluminium enclosure expansion system complete with 12 universal panel mounts, a gorgeous 3X VGA 1920 by 480 touchscreen. And if I scroll back up just now, you should be able to see that effectively there's four 480 screens there above the keyboard. So it's four different displays. And, you know, I'm just looking at this from my own point of view of owning websites. You could maybe use this to log into different terminals and different servers and, 
you know, you can log into them all at the same time and monitor different things. It's pretty interesting having four like kind of mini displays for things like that there. So uh, you can see it's got an RGB LED mechanical keyboard. It's got a 10 watt stereo speaker system. Accommodates any single board computer, Raspberry Pi, Micro, ITX, Intel, NUC, 4x4, etc. Um, now, this is going to be, in my opinion, quite expensive. And you go to the shop, you can see that the Founders Edition kit here is $899. So, yes, I can't remember, I can't remember if I've seen the price of this one. Oh, here we go. Kit price to be uh, decided will be sub 449 So. The Founders Edition is going to be more expensive, but the, the actual kit is going to be $449. I missed that page earlier on. Um, so, yeah, this is a really interesting product, and it's something that can be used in lots of different ways. So they've got different suggestions here. Perfect for musicians, a MIDI synthesizer, drum machine, MIDI sequencer, digital effects unit, um, system admin and programmers, that's maybe how I saw that's being used, amateur radio operators, hackers and makers. If you look at the back of it, you can actually see there's a couple of XLR ports for microphones and different things, but I think you can change these up uh, and you know set them up in different ways. Again, this isn't for everyone. Of course it isn't, this isn't for every single person out there, but what this could theoretically do is replace different computers and different products which are very, very expensive to buy on their own. So this could actually be cheaper than buying another product outright. And I know that myself, you know, even moving over to DaVinci Resolve to edit videos, if you buy all their official Blackmagic Design video editing equipment, it can run into the thousands. And maybe this is something that you could kind of, you know, make yourself create some sort of custom build to do what you need for video editing or for music or for hacking or whatever, but it's very interesting. So love to hear your thoughts on this, guys. Let me know what you think about the Ready 100 and all of these different mods. And um, I'm kind of torn between this being the coolest mod and the mechanical keyboard, but they're all quite interesting in their own way. So thanks for watching, guys. I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of these Raspberry Pi 4 and 400 modifications and products. So let me know what you think about them, and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.